Welcome students who are taking financial accounting. Uh, this here series of videos are on the chapter one short exercises that were assigned as part of the uh, homework problems that were assigned in your digital study guide. Uh, this set of videos is for the short exercises. Um, I'll go through as many as I can within you know a decent period of time. I don't know how many videos it's going to take in order to uh, complete all the exercises. I will have separate videos for the assigned problems for the exercises and uh, a separate set of videos for the problems that were assigned in the digital study guide. Now, the thing about this, uh, these videos are I'm going to be uh, trying to do the exercises and the problems almost as if I'm a student. Now, I, what I've done, so you can see the next screen here, let me bump over to the next. All right, there we go. So here's the, the first short exercise. And as you can see, um, I basically uh, scanned in uh, the exercise problem itself. So what you're seeing in the text is what's on the screen. And I'm going to be trying to work through these exercises and problems as if I was a student. Now realize that uh, the solution manual to all of the problems for the textbook are on your My Courses page. So what you should be doing is uh, you should be trying to work through the problems on your own and then checking your answers in the solution manual. Now if your answer is the same, then fine, great, wonderful. Um, but if your answer is wrong, you should be trying to figure out why you have the incorrect answer. And if you can't figure that out, then you know you should be watching this video to watch me work through the problem. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be just not only working the problem through uh, as a student, but I'm also going to be trying to bring some additional information, thoughts that come into my mind on how to do the problems or just adding additional information to to the videos in order to help clarify the exercises. Um, I'm also going to be scribbling a lot. So this here is all ad hoc. I mean, I am going to use a digital pen. Let me get that. All right, so here's my digital pen. And so I'm going to be scribbling a lot, and it's not going to be uh, neat. Okay. Uh, my handwriting isn't the best, but you know, follow along. And if after watching or at some point in the, uh, the videos you don't understand uh, what's going on, pause and rewind and rewatch the video. Okay? I mean, that's the whole beauty of videos is you get to watch it again and again and again until it sticks in your mind. But if you still don't understand a, you know, a concept or you have a question or something like that, you know, feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor. Um, email is generally not the best thing that you can use for uh financial accounting because a lot of the concepts require two-way communication. I mean, you know, if it's a simple question like um, on this short exercise, if you went and, and, you know, said, well, I don't know what the reality principle is, uh, you know, I can't find it in the book or something like that. I mean, if it's something simple that can be addressed by email, you know, feel free to email. I'm not saying don't email. What I am saying is, is that as we move forward, uh, you know, through things, your, you know, the, the concepts will need to be explained. And as the concepts are being explained, you're going to have additional questions, which creates the two-way communication, which you can't get via email. So watch the videos, and if you still don't understand something or you have a question, you know, feel free to telephone or, uh, you know, email an instructor. I mean, you know, if you live, let's say, you know, in Europe or something like this, and or you have a huge time difference, I can understand um, emailing versus telephoning. You might not be able to get a hold of an instructor as easily as, you know, someone who lives in the United States. Um, and, you know, I mean, we will go back and forth, back and forth by email if we have to. But realize that uh, for the learning of it, you know, you're much better off if you can telephone, okay? Um, I don't know how many videos it's going to take to cover these. Uh, I'm just going to 
work, go in and you know try to keep the videos. I keep saying 10 minutes, but I'm finding that the average video is right around 15 minutes. Some are longer; they end up being 20 minutes long. Uh, you know, it all depends upon the the problems and you know what makes for a good break. All right. So uh, some might be 10 minutes. Most will be in the 15 minute area, and uh, you know some will be a bit, little bit longer. You know, obviously you don't have, since the uh, exercises will be shown on a PowerPoint slide, uh, you can fast forward through the video in order to get to that particular question if you need. You don't have to watch, you know, like let's say for example, um, I do five problems here and you're looking for number three, right? Well, you can fast forward to number three and watch that particular one. Okay, so with that said, um, uh, you know, and like I said, this is ad hoc, meaning I'm just doing things off the cuff. This is not professionally produced. Okay, uh, you know, I'm, you know, this is just as if I was sitting next to you with a pencil and, you know, paper, and I'm scribbling and just talking and whatever thoughts come into my mind. Uh, you know, as I was going along here, you know, that was one of the things that, you know. You know, I all of a sudden I stopped and went and said, oh, wait a minute, and something hit me in the head, okay? Um, I will just end up blurting it out on the screen, so don't mind my taking segues and, you know, going, you know, here or there. I'll generally come back, and I also will have a tendency to, to repeat myself an awful lot, so, you know, just bear with it, Okay. So um, we're going to start here with uh, the short exercises, and in the uh, assignment was you're supposed to do short exercises S1-2 through S1-14. Right. So on pages uh, 30 to 33 in the textbook. So um, I'm just going to go in and uh, start with S1-2 here. All right. It says. Jack Sanders owns and operates Jack's Java Coffee Shop. He proposes to account for the shop's assets at their current market value in order to have current amounts on the balance sheet. Which operating concept or principle does Jack violate? Okay. Now, as an example here, I mean, if you look in this solution manual, it's going to tell you that the answer is D, you know, the cost principle. Okay, and, and that's just fine, you know, if you pick the cost principle, but if you pick one of the other ones, well, why would it be the cost principle? All right, and this is what I mean by I'm just going to add a, extra information and, you know, thoughts, you know, things like this to help clarify the problem, all right, uh, or clarify the solution. All right, first of all, when I'm reading the problem, okay, and a lot of financial accounting, like I if you were watching introductory videos, I said it wasn't about memorization. Okay, it's about understanding an application. But part of understanding, you know, there's a difference between comprehension versus understanding. Okay, so what do I mean? Well, with comprehension, because this is in the English language, you know, we uh, comprehension is more like just reading this like a romance novel. I mean, you're reading it, you know, because it's in English, you kind of get it, and you're just kind of accepting it w w the way it is. You know, you know, in this romance novel, the author is just trying to get you to visualize in your mind an image, and you know, you're watching basically you know, through the written word, you know, a movie in your mind, okay? So you're able to comprehend because you understand the English language, but that doesn't mean that you understand what's going on. Understanding in your mind is a, is like having a two-way conversation in your mind. You're always asking yourself questions, and you're always trying to answer, and you're trying to bring everything that is in, you know, your body of knowledge to the table. So as you're reading a, um, a problem here, and all financial accounting problems are going to be word problems. So if you had math for business and finance or math applications or a subject like that, you, you know that, you know, uh, word problems are, you know, you have to slow down, you know, read and think about what it is that you're reading, that you're comprehending. 
and keeping everything in the back of your mind. You know, so he says he proposes to account for the shop's assets. You know, shop's assets are what the business owns at the current market current market value. Well, what's the current market value? You know, well, that is a cost. Okay, I mean that's what you would buy it for. Okay, in order to have current amounts on the balance sheet. What is the accounting concept or principle does Jack violate? Which accounting concept or principle does Jack violate? Okay. It's not the business entity principle. The business entity is whether it's a sole proprietorship, it's a, you know, a corporation, whether it was incorporated or it might be a limited liability company. Uh, you know, something like that, okay? So it's not the business entity principle because, you know, these forms of a company have nothing to do with how things are reported on your uh, balance sheet. Going concern is whether it affects whether the business will continue on. You know, it's a going concern, meaning um, my concern is as to whether uh, this will continue on into the future, okay? Um, or whether the business is going to close. The going concern has no effect on um, the value that's uh, of things put on the balance sheet. It has a, more of an effect upon whether it, you know, will the business will stay in business and whether it'll uh, whether it actually belongs on there. Um, then we have the right reliability principle you know how reliable is that information well you know the, it's this is not an issue um, because when you have when you buy something okay you should have an invoice or some kind of documentation a receipt um, or something like that, that shows you the the value, the dollar value of whatever it is that you purchased. Okay, so it has nothing to do with whether this information is reliable or not. Okay, um, so just by default, if you didn't know anything else, you have to pick D, the cost principle, um, for the simple reason that you know it can't be A, it can't be B, and it can't be C, so it has to be D. 